Okay, okay, okay. Click. Cool. I'm getting all the good sounds. I'm getting the record. Things are happening. Let's continue. Not new game. Dear God, not new game. Oof. Oh no, it's not responding. Kind of leapt right into that, I'm sorry. Hey, button pushers, it's time to cast the control on over once again, and welcome back to Sagebrush. Um, last time was several days ago. Um, do 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 do. We found several tape decks. We were inside the farm shed. We saw that the barn is bloody. We went to the door of the church, but it is fancily locked. We went into Andrew's trailer? No. Yes, this is where we are now. And got a key. Okay, mild technical thing there where the options bugged out on me. But we're back. Hit resume. We are currently in what I believe is Andrew's trailer, because that's Andrew's letter to his brother that he never sent. Yeah, Andrew's door, Andrew's tape deck, Andrew's journal. And we found a note to Andrew. Can I remember what buttons I push? So F is flashlight. E is that thing. Cool, cool, cool. I think I'll be able to figure other stuff out. Anyway, we need to go to who's... Viola's. Gotcha, gotcha. Viola's door. You know, I cannot recall if this is the same level of sunset it always was. I think it was, and the time isn't passing. But it would be very clever of them to make it get very slightly darker as you find clues. Viola. From what I recall, usually the women's were on this side. Lillian, Julie and Ellie, Viola, Julia, and Lucas. Um, use. You unlock the door using Viola's trailer key. This is a very small space for three people to have slept. Viola's diary, note from Viola, tape deck, note to Viola, lesson plan. Let's start with lesson plan seems innocuous enough. Tuesday AM, discussion of Matthew chapter 26. This is Tuesday PM, discussion of the lies of the false churches. Yikes. Uh, Wednesday AM, discussion of Father James. I think. Yeah, it's gotta be. F R. Of Father James' vision slash prophecies. Wednesday p.m. Field work. Not to nitpick, but wouldn't it make more sense to do the field work first? Because then when night began to fall, you would be able to use the minimal amount of light for learning inside a building with a single lamp, as opposed to trying to do field work in the dark. I just... A reading from the Book of Serio. James 113. I don't know how to read the colons and dashes in these things. This is the word of the angel Serio given unto the man James in the time before the days of taking. Serio came unto James as he returned from unrighteous war. The angel, so James is a veteran, maybe. Thinks of himself as a veteran at the absolute least. The angel appeared onto the man James under seven stars in the eastern sky. This angel spoke. Be not afraid, man, for you are a chosen, you are a chosen as a messenger. Typo or flowery language. The world may never know. These words are the Lord's words, become my words, become your words. Okay, note to Viola. I will see you tonight for alternative cleansing in the rectory. Come early, we have much to talk about. Know the day I received my first vision, and you will know the code. Uh, I 
don't know the day he received his first vision, I suppose we will have to find that out. Note from Viola. Lillian, forgive me if I am speaking too freely, but I care deeply about you and I worry you are having doubts about the father and his teachings. You're young, Lily. I understand where you're coming from, believe me, but as someone with a lot more life experience, let me tell you that you have nothing to doubt. Father James is a prophet of the Lord, and I can say so with confidence because I'm old, I guess is her logic. He speaks the true word. If you need proof, just look at his prophecies that have come true. But more than that, if you pray and listen quietly, you will feel in your very soul the truth of his teachings. Yikes. I am here for you if you need to talk. Yours in Christ's love, Viola. Cool diary. I have forgotten what love felt like. I thought that all the years suffering under Eric's thumb had ruined me. Great. Battered woman would flee to literally anywhere that felt safe. So I understand why she'd fall hook, line, and sinker for the cult. That's exactly the kind of person the cult wants. Someone who's vulnerable. Basically. I had a lot more words for it, but it, it really does just come down to someone who's vulnerable. Uh, I thought there was no hope for happiness ever again, but I was so, so wrong. I feel so safe here. Father James has restored my faith in Christ, but also in men and in myself. A wonderful blessing. Yes, there is pain, but it is necessary, and I enter into it willingly and joyfully. So, okay, what pain? I am so blessed to be part of this flock and to help ensure that my dear children taste the fruit of eternal life. Lucas is taken to life here easily, but Juliet, well, we will need to be patient with Juliet. She just needs time. She'll come around and see. Father James says that Eric will burn in hell for his sins against me. I know I shouldn't take joy in that, but even the thought of it makes me smile. Father says that even Eric could join the flock if he wanted it badly enough, but I know my husband well enough to know that he would laugh in the face of, in, laugh in the, face of the truth. He is rotten with sin, and he will get what he deserves. Oh, Lord Jesus, please give me guidance. I was only doing what he asked of me, Lord. I was doing it for him and for you, but I'm two weeks late now and throwing up every morning. Lord, oh, Lord, I don't know who the father is. It could be James, or it could be... Do I tell him? Will he be happy with me? Or furious? Have I sinned? What cleansing will I need to ensure my soul... Will I need to endure to rid my soul of this black mark? Okay, so, that confirmed some creepy things, and I have people who are entering into the home, so it is going to get very loud right now. This is unfortunate. So, late, and throwing up means she's pregnant, means something was happening at this cult. I could speculate. But I think we will move along because I am uncomfortable to linger on this thought. Oof, though. Very big oof. Tape deck time. Yeah, because I've read everything else in here. We were chosen, all of us, by the Lord. Do you know how good that feels? to be chosen? I hope you do. It's a feeling we all need in our lives. And on top of that, Father James took a special interest in me. He said he felt spiritually invigorated by my presence and often called me to the rectory to spend time with him. wonder what that means. Not dumb, I knew, but I didn't care. I was so honored to be his chosen. Well, let's just hit map. So that's the rectory. We have been to the cleansing room. We have not been into it. That is the barn I referred to that had blood outside. Uh, I don't think we could get into the mines. The rectory, it said something about knowing his, uh, the day of his first vision. Yeah, that's much smarter. Is it getting darker? I can't tell. Um, I'm going to head to the rectory and see if I need to know the numbers or if it will just tell me. Hello, schoolhouse. You might have the information I need about the first vision, actually. 
So I'm going to peek in here, and if I find it, I'll let you know. And if I don't, we'll see when I exit the door. Okay, I found a calendar that says June 3rd is the Feast of the First Revelation. I'm going to assume that's what it means. So June 3rd. Yes, the first revelation, the day Father James received, received, I can speak, I have words good, the truth, okay, so this way, June 3rd, so June should be 6th because it comes after May, so 6-3, Zero, six, zero, three. The padlock clicks open and slips easily off the gate. New building, new building. Let's see what a rectory is. I still haven't Googled it. Okay, first off, actually. Hello. Oh, I just, can just I can examine the bed from in here. I don't like knowing that there's a bed in there. I'm also not seeing a generator. Good to know. Um. Oh, this one just worked. Okay. You take a book off the shelf. We know the conspiracy can trace itself back as far as the 4th century when Name and his cronies first began to exclude essential works from the Bible. You flip through a pamphlet on the shelf. There is an ancient law that modern society has fought to bury. The role of man is to protect and nourish the flesh. The role of woman is to protect and nourish the soul. So many things I could say about that, but we're going to go with heteronormative nonsense for one, and transphobic as fuck for two. Hooray. You take a Bible from the shelf and skim. To explain the transphobic as fuck thing, it's because they're excluding non-binary people in that. Just in case that was too vague. You take a Bible from the shelf and skim. For Christ also suffered once for sins, and the righteous for the unrighteous the righteous for the unrighteous that he might bring us to God being put to death in the flesh but made alive in the spirit cool as always three books per thing um I guess I just turned the light on in that room which I didn't like that it's red which might be photographs we're gonna come back to that then Nope, can't turn that lamp on. Read a note on the Messiah. I would like to clarify a few points of confusion that I have noticed among the flock. It is imperative that this is, un that this is understood deeply and truly. I am not the Christ. Only Christ is the Christ. I am a prophet of Christ, his messenger of flesh, a vehicle of the word. I have been blessed with abilities beyond the normal man and a great responsibility by our Lord, but I am still only a man. My teachings are directly transmitted from our Heavenly Father. Okay. On one hand, hey, at least the religious dude knew not to overstep, I guess. He had a boundary, a singular boundary. I am everything except for Christ, I guess. Still weird. And I do not blame the others for thinking. You cannot have someone have full and utter devotion and faith in only you and expect them to not also... Consider you a Messiah. Meditation on Suffering Transcribed from a sermon given by Father James. What do each of us have in common? A soul? The stain of sin? Love of our Lord? Yes, these things, but also, we have all endured great suffering. And that, friends, is why we are here. As Christ suffered, so we have and will continue to suffer. Our suffering paved the path for each of us to join the flock. I would like to clarify one of my own personal philosophies here based on this, which is that, um, yes, there will always be suffering. And what I consider to be the purpose of humanity as a whole is that it should be our goal to always ensure that the suffering of the next generation is less than ours. And I bring that up. 
because in a lot of conversations right now, it is brought up that more recent generations have more and they aren't grateful enough for it. And that they take things for granted. And in my opinion, the future being better is the one thing that future generations should be able to take for granted no matter what. If the future isn't better, those of the present have failed. Whether or not the future is better is a topic for people who have far more knowledge on the subject than me. But I just wanted to mention that yes, suffering is human, but in such that trying to prevent others suffering is human as well. They go hand in hand for me. Okay. Suffering as we know is the divine currency, but like any currency, we can exchange one form of legal tender for another. I'm sorry? And so we pay our debt in physical pain. Why? Uh, cause you're all a little fucked up and you've been misguided by a cult leader. That sounds like a pamphlet. So you've been misguided by a cult leader. Uh, I know some of you fear the cleansing room. I understand I really do, but bodily pain is temp is but temporary. It can be overcome. Spiritual pain is eternal. It will follow us long past the days of reckoning. So what I'm noticing is bodily pain means that there's a measure of physical punishment dealt out to all of them. And I'm thinking of Viola and her abusive husband and how she thinks she has found safety and a home when it sounds to me that all she found was a different flavor of abuse. And that is very common. This is your choice. Bleed now from temporary wounds of transient flesh or suffer eternally. When you put it that way, it's not such a dis difficult decision, is it? That's a, a certainly a decision. I do think that with that wonderful introduction into this, the rectory, um, which I'm starting to think might be where the father lived since he didn't have a trailer and it would be so fitting if he had this nice lovely multi-story house set off and away from everyone by a whole building and everyone else had tiny trailers for multiple families anyway that's gonna mark the end of my turn let me just cast the controller on back to you and hope you pass along again soon i'll ab see you next time bye bye i wonder if you can hear the housemates I wonder if the housemates can hear me. I wonder what you'll hear my housemates say. I wonder what the nonsense will be.